It's no secret that Earth is getting hotter, and it's our fault. Climate change is cranking up the planet's thermostat, and while we scramble for solutions, let's consider one completely ridiculous idea. What if we took every drop of water on Earth, every ocean, every lake, every raindrop, and dumped it straight into the sun? Would it explode? Would we accidentally create a cosmic level disaster? Let's find out. First, let's get one thing straight. The sun is an absolute beast. It's not just a big ball of fire. It's a massive nuclear reactor. At its core, the sun burns up a staggering 50 million degrees Celsius, hot enough to rip atoms apart and fuse their nuclei together. This fusion reaction releases more energy in one second than humanity has ever produced in all of history. Every second, the sun generates the energy equivalent of 15 billion nuclear bombs. Just let that sink in. But that's just the beginning. The sun is so large that you could fit 1.3 million Earths inside it and still have room to spare. It's 109 times wider than our planet, stretching over 1.4 million kilometers across. Its surface, though much cooler than its core, still sizzles at 5,500 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt almost every metal on Earth in an instant. And yet, Compared to the blistering inferno of the 50 million degree core, the surface almost seems chilly. And here's something weird. The sun isn't actually yellow. You have probably spent your whole life joining the sun as a bright, warm yellow circle. But in reality, it's pure white. It only looks yellow from Earth because our atmosphere scatters shorter wavelengths of light, leaving behind the warmer hues. From space, it's blindingly white. So if we think a little water is going to stop this thing, well, we've got some loading to do. Okay, let's not go straight into dumping entire oceans into the sun. Let's stop just to test the waters. Let's take a single pint of water, 568 milliliters, about the size of a standard beer glass. We send it straight toward the sun, hitching a ride on NASA's solar probe, one of the fastest human-made objects ever built designed to withstand extreme heat as it spreads the sun up close. As soon as the water reaches the sun's outer layers, poof, gone. Not even a dramatic explosion, not even a sizzle, just instant vaporization. The extreme heat rips the water molecules apart into hydrogen and oxygen, both of which are instantly absorbed. And the sun, it doesn't even notice. In fact, it's that harm in it, we've technically fed it fuel, the hydrogen from the water fuses with the sun's existing hydrogen, making it ever so slightly bitter. So, uh, yeah, that can work. We need to scale up. Let's think bigger, a lot bigger. How about the Caspian Sea? It's the largest enclosed body of water on Earth, sometimes called a lake, sometimes a sea. But either way, it's massive. It holds 78,000 200 cubic kilometers of water. That's enough to fill 31 billion Olympic swimming pools or cover the entire US in eight meters of water. That's a lot of water. Sounds like it might actually make a difference, right? Well, we've got a small problem. How do we get it to the sun? Let's start with tanker trucks. We've made 344 billion of them. That's 40 times the number of vehicles on earth. Even if we could build that many, the traffic jams would be legendary. Just imagine the road rouge. And rockets? How about SpaceX Starships? They can carry around 1,200 tons of Parno per trip. To move the entire Caspian Sea, we'd need 310 billion launches. If we launch one every three seconds for four years straight, we'd just be getting started. Yeah, not happening. And pipelines? The fastest pumps on Earth would still take 450,000 years to move that much water. And that's if we had a straight shot pipeline to the sun. With spoiler alert, we don't. So even before we try to dump all this water onto the sun, logistics alone make it nearly impossible. But let's ignore that. Let's pretend we somehow get it there. Boom. Instant vaporization. Just like before, the sun doesn't even flinch. 
It's like throwing a thimble of water into an industrial blast furnace. The sun still wouldn't care. Clearly, we're not thinking big enough. So let's stop messing around. Let's go all in. We open giant portals at the bottom of the Mariana Trench and teleport every drop of water on Earth to the sun. That's about 1.386 billion cubic kilometers of water, enough to fill nearly 533 trillion Olympic-sized swimming pools. If we spread it evenly over the entire planet, it would create an ocean nearly 2.7 kilometers deep. In the blink of an eye, it's gone. The sun just swallows it up. 97% of Earth's water vanished. No more oceans, no more lakes, no more rivers meaning no more rain. The moment all water disappears, Earth stops functioning as we know it. The entire water cycle collapses. Water is the backbone of Earth's climate. Without it, no evaporation means no moisture in the air. No condensation means no clouds. And no precipitation means no rain, no snow, no storms. With no clouds, the sky is permanently clear. Sunlight beats down relentlessly on the land, and the world turns into a desert. Then, temperatures skyrocket. Water doesn't just keep us hydrated, it regulates the planet's temperature. The oceans absorb heat during the day and release it at night, keeping temperatures stable. With our water, land absorbs heat uncontrollably, with no way to cool off. Some places, especially near the equator, reach 67 degrees Celsius. And as humans, we can't survive over 55 degrees Celsius for long. Entire regions become uninhabitable. Deserts expand, crops fail, and cities overheat. Only the poles and underground would be remotely livable. But then, the oxygen levels drop. Most people assume trees make all of our oxygen. It's not true. The ocean produces 50 to 80% of the Earth's oxygen. Phytoplankton, tiny ocean plants, pump out oxygen through photosynthesis. No ocean equals no phytoplankton. No phytoplankton means no oxygen renewal. At first, we don't notice. There's still oxygen left in the atmosphere. But over time, levels drop. Breathing gets harder. Altitude sickness becomes the new normal. At some point, oxygen levels get too low. And without artificial support, humans suffocate. Water is the foundation of all life on Earth. Without it, plants die first. Herbivores starve, carnivores follow, then us. It's the fastest and most brutal extinction event in history. The only survivors? Maybe some underground bacteria and deep dwelling insects. For humans, we might have one last hope, living on the ground or migrating to Antarctica where temperatures remain barely survivable. But even if we manage that, the Earth will never recover. And the sun? You'd think pouring quintillions of liters of water onto the sun would cool it down. But no, it gets bigger, it gets hotter, and it gets angrier. You see, the sun doesn't burn like a fire. It's not something you can put out with water. Instead, it's powered by nuclear fusion a process where hydrogen atoms smash together under extreme pressure and temperature to create helium, releasing an insane amount of energy in the process. And guess what water is made of? That's right, H2O, hydrogen plus oxygen. By dumping trillions upon trillions of liters of water into the sun, we haven't weakened it, we have fed it. Instead of cooling down, the sun absorbs the hydrogen and starts fusing fuel even faster. It gets hotter, it gets bigger, it gets more unstable. We've basically turned the sun into 15 billion nuclear bombs on steroids. And if we keep going, the sun keeps expanding. The fusion process spirals out of control, it becomes too massive. Until eventually, boom! The sun collapses in on itself. For a brief moment, it might go supernova. A catastrophic explosion brighter than an entire galaxy. The sheer blast would obliterate everything in the solar system. And then, a black hole. Whoops. 
Okay, so maybe let's not dump Earth's wall to into the sun, but let's talk about what's actually going to happen to the sun. In five billion years, the sun will run out of hydrogen. It will expand into a red giant, swallow Mercury, Venus, and maybe Earth. Then it will shed its outer layers, forming a white dwarf. Over trillions of years, it will cool into a black dwarf, a dead star. But here's the thing. Black dwarfs don't exist yet. The universe isn't old enough for one to have formed. And if you like that fact, before we sign off, let's lighten the mood with more insane space facts. Did you know meteorites aren't hot when they land? They're usually cold. Venus, not Mercury, is the hottest planet. Sunsets on Mars are blue. One million Earths can fit inside the sun. And space is completely silent. No air, no sound. So, to recap, does pouring water on the sun extinguish it? Nope, it does the exact opposite. Maybe some things just aren't to be messed with. But hey, at least now you know. What other crazy experiments should we try next? Should we throw the moon into the sun? Should we replace our sun with other known stars across the universe? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more hypothetical scenarios. We love doing them. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious.